Okay, this is the Moran Sustainable Enterprise Conference. Is this the conference that you came to? Good, all right, we're here. <laughs> this is supposed to work. Here we go, there we go. So this is one of my favorite quotes from Gregory Bateson. He says, the major problems of the world are the result of the difference between the way nature works and the way people think. Have you ever noticed that, right? So this is a conference that's designed to help us get our mind back in a relationship with nature. So is that the right conference to be at today? Great. Well, I want to talk with, about some of the really great things that's uh, been happening in Marin. For the seventh year in a row, we're the healthiest county in California. Hey, right? Who loves living in Marin? Right? Who loves Marin? All right, I got the right audience here then. And one of the reasons it's the healthiest county in uh, California is because of all the open space that we have. And it's groups like uh, MALT and uh, Marin Conservation League who have been working for years to keep the land free for us and keep us healthy here. But there are some consequences to that. Um, because we are so healthy, we're living longer. And uh, we preserve nature, nature preserves us. Uh, we have the oldest demographic in the, in the state. Um, and the largest growing demographic is 85 and above. So we have a lot to look forward to. We have uh, 44 farmers markets uh, a month in the growing season. Thank you for uh, AIM and for farmers. Any farmers and anybody from AIM here today? Anybody eats here today? Okay, we love those guys, right? Yet we're only 8% sufficient in uh, food production. If we didn't have the farmers markets, uh, what would we do? And we have 13,000 people that are undernourished. So there's groups like Extra Food, res respecting our elders, that are taking the excess food and, and moving it to people that need it. So we do have people doing that, but it is something that we continue to need to work with. Um, if you look at these things that I'm speaking about, each one of them is an opportunity for business and organizations to participate in. Well, here we go here. You want to advance the next slide, please? Tiburon is one of the richest cities in America. Anybody from Tiburon today? I didn't think so. <laughs> Yet there are 1,300 people in Marin that are homeless. Thank goodness we have Ritter House and places like that that are working with that. And one third of our seniors are, lived on fixed incomes below the elder self-sufficiency index, $27,000. So even though we're the richest, um, we're living longer, and it creates challenges for us. Novato and San Rafael vote is the best place to live in America. Who's from Novato and San Rafael? Great. Don't you love living there? I lived there for 15 years in Novato and uh, loved it. Had to move down to Mill Valley. Okay. But. One of the things that uh, put uh, San Rafael and Novato further down the list than some of the other places, like Fresno, Texas, which was number one, is that we're losing our youth to the high cost of living, and there's insufficient affordable housing to meet our needs. Oh, and then there's sea level rise. So Novato, San Rafael, Tiburon, even though they're rich, they're going to get wet. So there's challenges there as well. So we have the ability to be 100% powered by renewable energy. Uh, only 75% of all electric cust customers are part of MCE. Who's on MCE here? OK. Only 4% are deep green. Who's deep green? All right, look at you. We've got some recruiting to do. All of us at deep green are here today. <laughs> so we have work to do. So what are we building? Question. And this conference is about what are we building? 
And what is a story that we could tell that would make a difference? Why is it important to tell a story? There's a lot of stories going around, as you know. But one story that inspired me was the story about the Dome Cathedral in Cologne, Germany. You know, it took 800 years to finish that. It started in the 12th century. They finished in the 18th century. 800 years. They worked for 250 years on it. They had a war or something. They ran out of money, and they quit. Most of these cathedrals in Europe took 250 to 300 years to build. Can you imagine us looking into the future 250, 300 years from now and asking ourselves, what did we build? What inspired us? So there's a story that goes with this that uh, the architect of this cathedral was looking for an apprentice to work with him. So he went out on the job site and he found this one young man was laying this stone, said, what are you doing? He says, oh, I'm laying these stones. He says, oh, good, you're doing a good job. So he went to the next young man, he said, what are you doing? He says, oh, I'm building this wall. He said, great, it's beautiful. So he went to this other guy, and he was down in the pit digging, and he, said, and he was singing and going on. He says, what are you doing? He said, I am building a monument to inspire humanity forever. So who did he hire? What can we build? that will inspire us and keep us true to what's possible, true to this beautiful place that we live in, that we've been gifted, that we live here. All the things that we need to do, we know what to do. Um, you'll see on the table there are six different areas of dr on drawdown, and they have their comparable sustainable development goal to that. So what, later we'll be doing something with, uh, at each table, we'll be talking about each one of those. Oh, here, you fixed it, great. So this is what the young man saw. What would Marin look like if you could imagine it 300 years from now? Would it look this beautiful? This is what inspired him. So there's a story to tell. And in our sections today, we have four different sections. Chris will elaborate more on those. But each one is designed to tell a story. And each one of us will walk away here with a story like, oh, that was interesting, or that wasn't very interesting, or I really learned something from this, or I really met somebody that I could work with. Oh, wow, look at the people in the room here. So there's an opportunity here for us today that if uh, we take advantage of it, we can really move forward. So here's a little excerpt from uh, Governor Brown. But I would say it's... Uh, time for all hands on deck to recognize the perilous uh, position that citizens of the world are now in and to take the scientifically based solutions that are available and can be implemented if there is the political will. And that we must generate by climate summits, by meetings such as this, and all other ways uh, that we can mobilize the political will Did you finish the rest of it? Or did it end then? Anyway, what he says so, is... To start getting on the side of nature instead of trying to uh, fight with it uh, because it will ultimately win. Right? So let's get on the side of nature and let's be on the winning side for a change. So it's taken a lot of people to put this conference together, but one that I want to bring up right now is my co-chair, Chris Yolanis. Uh, this is, will be his fourth event that he's produced this year. I'm smarter than him. I only produced one last year and this year. He produced two more, uh, one on finance and your business and one on the Clean Tech Summit. Uh, Chris is uh, dedicated and committed to the health and well-being of our community. He founded, uh, co-founded uh, VenturePad with Alejandro Marino and um, continues to open the space up for all of us to participate and work in. I'm really proud to bring Chris up. Chris, Chris Yolantis, thank you. Give him a big hand. Those of you who know Larry's work, uh, it's been going on here for 40 years. He uh, has been very active in this community and around the country in ending hunger um, providing affordable housing and just better communities. So I wanted just to acknowledge him and, and if you could give him a hand also.
Good morning, everybody. We made it to the second one. <laughs> uh, we had this, this session or this, uh, this conference for the first time a year ago, and we didn't think we could quite pull it off. We were kind of just building the airplane while we were flying. And uh, it's been really fun to be able to leverage that knowledge. Not to say we didn't make a lot of mistakes <laughs> this time around, but it's fun to have a lot of folks back. How, how many of you attended last year? So thanks for coming on back. I see we, we have some, some fresh new faces, and it's, we're, we're trying to expand the tent, and um, this is one of the mechanisms to do that. So why are we here? Um, we really try to design this day to do some deep dives. And those of you who have been around the concert circuit, or the concert, the conference circuit, uh, in this county know that we have a lot of one and two hour shallow dives, um, but not a lot of deep dives. And so we really designed this day to, uh, to have some great experts and panels up here in the morning, and then in the afternoon allow you to go into tracks where you get expertise, but instead of just the stage on the stage, we want you to meet and mingle and really look at, at peer-based solutions to bring back home, right, and to activate. So you're gonna, that's, that's a theme. Um, we want you going back home to your offices and to your homes and to your organizations uh, inspired and activated and connected. So you're gonna kind of get a, a little bit of a sense of that, especially in the afternoon. And we're gonna try to inspire you. This is hard work. Uh, this is hard work, and we need to refresh and replenish um, and, 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 and really nourish one another. And so when you're feeling kind of down and out and alone, uh, you're not. Just recognize that you have a lot of support behind you, uh, a lot of people that care about you and the work that you do. So um, we want to inspire you and, and get you energized today. Um, but also connect. So we were told from last year, you want to meet people in the halls and have some time to be able to, again, kind of do more than just exchange cards. So we really encourage you to, uh, to connect and find the affinity, uh, find some, some common ground and common work that you want to do. Um, and then we hope to put you in touch with people, whether it be the exhibitors or people uh, that are just in the audience that can help you accomplish things, whether it be raising money or filling in gaps in the skill sets um, or get you, again, further along on your missions. Impact is, a, is maybe overused these days, but um, I think it's significant in that it, it, it makes us think about metrics of performance, and that's not a bad thing as long as we can separate ourselves sometimes from that outcome, especially financial outcomes. How many of you are constantly balancing the feeding of your soul and your wallet? Right? Especially in this, this kind of work that we do. So I certainly recognize as the founder of a sick startup um, that if we're constantly focused only on financial performance, we, we're going to be pretty unhappy a lot of times. So I encourage you all to, to look at other ways that, that we can um, seek feedback in terms of our, of our performance and our impact. All right. I wanted to thank um, Larry and, and um, Aliano. Uh, can you stand, please? Can you give this gentleman a hand? Leon Kuyumujian, um, Leon, where are you? He's back there, tip, tip a hat. Again, uh, core team member, Robert Gould, Leslie, can you stand? Where are you? Leslie Alden, Robert, uh, core team and the advisory board, can you please stand? We've got uh, folks from the advisory board that has helped us uh, all along create some fantastic uh, content and, uh, and guide us along. We got 50 speakers today, guys. We had 70 last year. <laughs> we vowed to, 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 to lower them uh, and, and uh, make it a little more uh, succinct. Uh, we've tried to do that. We've got, you know, we're, we're a little bit less than 70 from last year. But I think they're, they're great speakers, and, and I think you'll enjoy them. Um, can, uh, can, can our volunteers stand up, please, and give, recognize you all? Thanks again to all the volunteers that are helping out. 
our sponsors have been fantastic. Just about nine tenths of them from last year are back. Um, VenturePad is, is organizing it overall, but uh, uh, MCE uh, is our, our lead sponsor. Uh, uh, County of Marin, thank you. Um, Beneficial State Bank, Sonoma State School of Business, uh, City of Novato, uh, MMWD, and TAM are new sponsors this year. And uh, and Bob Herbst of the the, Mer the uh, San Rafael Airport. Uh, give our hand, give a hand to the sponsor, please. Please support them and, and all that they do. Um, I just wanted to do a, a, a really quick plug on this startup called VenturePad. Um, we started about a year and a half ago, and we've had a pretty good year. So we're now the largest co-working and meeting and entrepreneurship center here in Marin. So we're all about providing very affordable working space and connection um, to the community. So solopreneurs, telecommuters, startups, public-private collaborations. So we have large and small members. So City of San Rafael, County meets Whistle Stop, oh, their, their whole team, Ritterhouse, their whole team meets uh, at Bananas. They bring musical instruments and, and amps and stuff, and, and our house band really likes that. Um, Genentech is with us, uh, PacSun. We were honored to receive the, the Green Business of the Year Award this past year uh, and named a, a game changer by the North Bay Biz Magazine, um, the sole organization that was named here in Marin in, uh, in, in 2018. So we're very proud of that and, and thank the community for the support. So we, as Larry mentioned, we organized about four different events this past year um, and um, we'll keep doing it. I don't know how uh, often we'll be doing it, but we'll, we'll certainly do this again next year. Um, and I wanted to mention something about what we call impact entrepreneurship, that is encouraging startups, not only in uh, pure startups in that uh, just coming out of nothing, but uh, entrepreneurship within large organizations. So um, we, have, we have Joe Sp uh, a speaker coming to talk about their Autodesk's foundation. They're kind of a startup. They're, they're a four-year-old startup, right, Joe? I mean, so Autodesk, uh, 35-year-old uh, mainstay of this county um, is still doing startups, right? So we want to encourage that even within our, our large organizations. Marin has no uh, incubator. Quarter million people, lots of innovation. We have no incubator. So we used to have Venture Greenhouse. We used to have Renaissance Center. Bo those two incubators launched and supported two, 260 companies. Yeah, many of them are still around. But they lost their funding, so we're filling in the hole. And so we are taking applications for startups. Uh, we're taking applications for investors and, and advisors at VenturePad.Works. Uh, and, that, and that's our, um, our incubators formally launching again this fall. So day at a glance, um, we, we've got Damon uh, Connolly, our, our, the president of our, our board of supervisors, going to be welcoming. We've got uh, Congressman Jared Huffman. Um, Autodesk uh, Foundation, uh, E.D. Uh, Joe S uh, Spiker. Am I pronouncing this correct? Yeah. All right. Um, and we're going to learn uh, from some really cool experts uh, from local government on climate actions, uh, on policy, uh, as well as some, some CEOs and, and E.D.s of, of some companies that are doing amazing work here. Um, we have some young people going to be inspiring us at lunch. And then in the afternoon, we've got four tracks, and, and you can go uh, online and learn a little more about them um, if you want to look at the backgrounds of the speakers. We have closing keynote with, with Kat Taylor. How many of you have heard of Kat Taylor? Pretty amazing woman, uh, CEO and founder of Beneficial State Bank, uh, activist, philanthropist. Uh, 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 and then we'll have a reception out uh, on the back uh, with some, some great local food and, and wine. Uh, we do have uh, a little correction on the on the Wi-Fi, so um, you can go. Oh, it is fine. So H Honors is the network, and we're at SEC Guest uh, 18. So those of you who want to look at the online program um, and get a little more detail on on bios and descriptions, find um, H Honors as the network, and then the password is going to be uh, guest, or SEC guest 18. And it's on the front of your program. Okay? We saved about 
20,000 pages of printing by going online. We wanted to keep our, yeah. Uh, we, we also have uh, offsets that um, will um, make us carbon positive, right, um, for the conference. So we'll, um, Larry's going to talk to you a little bit about, about that. All right. So that's going to be about it. I, I want to introduce Damon at this point. Um, we are so fortunate to have Damon Conley as, as our supervisor. Uh, he's been a great supporter of VenturePad in this conference. Um, he has protected uh, open spaces while really working on the availability of affordable housing, which is a really tricky balance, as, as we all know. He's set our county on a path towards 100% renewable energy while keeping our fiscal state in order has spearheaded our response to homelessness, expanded access to, to public transit, infrastructure for bikes and pedestrians. Um, Ride with Damon is a, is a, a hit show now, I think. Uh, so you can, you can follow him as he navigates the uh, public transit and biking and alternative routes. Helps oversee the Marin County Flood Control, um, president of the, the Marin Board of Supervisors, president of the Workforce Alliance of the North Bay. Um, he helps oversee the Water Conservation District, Housing Authority, Open Space District, and he's Marin's representative on the Metropolitan Transportation Commission. Please welcome Damon Connolly. And I want to say a, a huge congrats to Chris, Larry, Alejandro, and their team uh, for again putting together a great event this year, a conference that features 50 great speakers, uh, I think you're going to really find it useful uh, today. And it's an honor to welcome all of you. Thank you for attending. When I addressed this group last year, we were fighting the North Bay fires, uh, which put an extra emphasis on our need to face major climate events. Research shows that in the face of major climate events like fire and flooding, neighborhoods where people know each other and look out for each other have the lowest mortality rates and recover more quickly. We saw this firsthand with Sonoma Strong and the Marin County response to our neighbors and colleagues to the north. The support was no, not only the right thing to do, but also was done with local people, local businesses, and was done immediately. When we build community in good times, we are more resilient when disaster strikes. We build community by talking to each other and engaging. And the environmental community in Marin, as we're reminded here today, is engaged and impactful. Marin County's environmental legacy is something we can all be proud of. This has been longstanding, from pioneering efforts to protect open space to launching the first community choice aggregation program in the state of California MCE Clean Energy. Marin has a solid foundation upon which to build. Last week, we cut the ribbon for two all-electric buses for Marin Transit. A week earlier, we cut the ribbon for 41 electric vehicle charging stations at the Civic Center for county employees and the public. I might add that all of the energy is 100% renewable electric through MCE Clean Energy because the county decided to opt up to deep green, and I hope everyone follows our example. Our local MCE dollars are building solar and creating jobs throughout Northern California. We now live in an era where the cost of solar powered energy is competitive with, if not cheaper than, coal and natural gas and is a source of job creation. These are concrete steps toward our drawdown Marin goal, which as many of you have heard me say before, is to electrify Marin. Marin continues to look forward, which is reflected in Measure AA the Transportation Sales Tax Renewable Expenditure Plan on the November ballot. Uh, this includes a, uh, the transportation and funding includes funding for reduced greenhouse gas emissions, 
and funding for protecting our roads from flooding and sea level rise, which is an up-to-date version of Measure AA uh, that we're uh, talking with voters about. Measure AA addresses today's problems and thinks ahead on sea level rise, flooding, public transit options, and relieving traffic congestion to reduce pollution. Regardless of your position on Measure AA, I encourage you to vote on November 6. So speaking of campaigns, the Drawdown Marin campaign is a year old now and put Marin County at the forefront of California's efforts to reverse global warming. I want to acknowledge my colleague, Supervisor Kate Sears, who has been a steadfast partner and leader on this effort. Thank you, Kate. Our purpose in launching this campaign is to engage businesses, residents, and government on how we can and must make a difference working together. The stakeholder collaboratives are forming incredibly intelligent, involved community members, technical experts, financial institutions, nonprofits, businesses, faith-based groups, and policymakers. We have a wealth of knowledge and expertise in our residents. I am so impressed by our community businesses, nonprofits, and other partners, many of whom are here today. I'm so proud of this community in taking on the tough choices and coming up with new tools to not just mitigate climate change, but to reverse the impacts of global warming, which is exactly what we know we need to do. West Marin put carbon sequestration on the map. Now the world is watching California and Marin. We must continue to ensure that everyone benefits for, from our adaptation and mitigation strategies. When I say everyone, I mean equitable solutions. Climate change multiplies inequities, dis disproportionately affecting those facing hunger and poverty. Those experiencing poverty are more likely to be working outdoors and lack access to a place to cool down during extreme heat events. Air pollution disproportionately impacts our low-income neighborhoods. Sea level rise will severely impact our vulnerable neighborhoods, including the Canal and Manzanita areas in Moran. Our solutions must take in more than the bottom line. Though, I believe that the strategies we are developing to reverse climate change will improve the bottom line. That is one of the very reasons we are here today at the Sustainable Enterprise Conference. So I had occasion to attend the Bioneers Conference here in Marin last weekend, and perhaps the best segment, I don't know if any of, uh, yeah, several people are here. You, you may remember what I'm talking about then. Perhaps the best segment I heard was from a collective of indigenous tribes from the northern Amazon area in Ecuador called the Cibo Alliance. Part of their talk underscored the threats that fossil fuel extraction poses on their culture, health, land, and surrounding habitat, and how choices we make directly impact that reality. They also reinforced our connectedness, and that it is possible to pursue a different path starting locally. I was impressed that the tribes have installed 121 solar installations in 16 villages to ensure economic and energy independence. There's much to be learned by considering the perspectives that indigenous people are sharing and adopting their framework and knowledge. Wealth to indigenous peoples is about pure air, pure water, and a healthy environment. I thought it would, would be worth pausing uh, this morning before we get to the technology and other great ideas today and contemplate the lived experiences of the tribes of the Cibo Alliance and other indigenous people and the perspectives and urgency they bring to these challenges. What we're talking about doing in Marin has a broader impact and we know Marin has never shied away from that kind of challenge or leadership. 
I want to thank each of you for addressing our largest environmental challenges. Government cannot do this alone. Individuals cannot stop climate change alone. Business cannot single-handedly reduce climate change. We are all in this together, so let's continue electrifying Moran. <laughs>